All right, Galagos Ruins. Today is the day we do a video on one of the most fun aspects of this game currently. I got up to floor four, and I'm going to tell you the basics about Galagos Ruins. Some tips and tricks, hopefully to help you go through as far as you can. If you like my videos and like all my content, hit the sub button, hit the like button, hit that bell dingy dingy thing so you know when I post a video. Let's go, baby. Tip of the day! Because of the revive changes in the game, you can now restore for free all of the revive monsters that you would like. All you gotta do is click on this button that says free restore, and it automatically goes to the revive units that you have. Maybe you don't want to restore any of your revive monsters, even if you don't want to. Just restore them. What this does is gives you account level experience. What account experience is good for is getting account skill points to go onto your tree, which this increases your power level for your summoner and your monsters. I already tested this out once and it works. As you can see, I am now level 54. I am at zero account points. You can only restore the revive monster once. As you see here on Tion, I get a free restore. I'm gonna do free restore and hit okay. I get all the materials back. Now what you do is just level him all the way back up again. All the way max level 70. So you get 1380 points for three star units. You get even more points when you do it to a four star unit and also a five star unit. They give the max amount of account level points when you level them up. The more you know. All right, so here's the deal. I already pre-recorded my Galagos Ruins run. And I grinded all the way up to floor 4-1, which is really the true gatekeeper for pretty much a lot of players right now. However, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on what to do, how to prepare for Galagos Ruins, and pretty much what I did. So let's talk about the ruins. Every season of Galagos Ruins is two weeks, and it'll reset at the end of that time. What's good about this is that means you get two extra five-star devil mons every month. Also, you can buy three LND scrolls from the Galago shop, and that's every season. Now, one of the first things you have to do is pick 30 monsters at the start to bring in for this whole season. Now, what monsters do you bring? You definitely need to bring the right monsters. This is highly crucial, especially when you start getting to maybe the third floor and the last boss stage of the third floor. However, I highly suggest if you're Orbia, you pick a lot of support monsters and frontline monsters. You really do not need to bring another damage dealer until you get to the fourth floor. I solo damaged every single floor and stage from the beginning of one to the end of three. For Cleef, you wanna bring a lot of support and a lot of damage dealers. Orbia and Cleef both require a lot of your monsters to be healers, especially cleansers. The defense break stacks on you that get into the dungeon are huge. You can get 6 to 10 defense breaks on you and your monsters really quickly in this dungeon. And now there's Kina. Kina needs frontline and damage dealers. I would still bring some hybrid kind of support healers as well. But with Kina, you obviously need more of a front line to do the damage for you. I do suggest to also bring one movement speed monster, whether that's Bernard or Remy. This is good for you if you run into a trap stage. I'll show you that as well. Magic order is very important as well. Don't worry about this team down here. However, what you really need to pay attention to is the summoner damage for the season. Increases damage dealt with fire by 100%. So when you can, use the summoner's fire weapon for sure. Also, for your monsters, increases water monsters damage dealt by 100%. That's huge. So definitely bring more water damage dealers if you have them. And for the creatures that the enemies you're facing, fire creatures attack by 50%. So if you see any fire creatures in your stages, I highly suggest to nuke them down first. So let's talk about the floor, shall we? but I'll go over the symbols of what they are. If you see the emblem with the swords, this is a normal battle area. The creatures aren't as hard as the Skull Elite battle area, but the rewards you get from them are a little bit smaller. 
If you see this emblem here, this means this is a stone statue room. This is where you can get more buffs, very unique buffs, that is detrimental to your team and your summoner. You should always be on the lookout for these. Plan your path accordingly to that. This is an example of a stone statue level, where in one or two or three of the rooms, there will be this statue that you click to get an extra buff. In the beginning, the buffs aren't the greatest, but everything adds up at the end. The farther you get, the more rare these buffs get, and the more stronger they are. You really have to pick wisely which buffs to get, depending on what your plan is in the future. As I said, the Skull is an elite battle area, which is a lot stronger monsters than the double dual swords. If you see a symbol that looks like a circus trampoline, this is a trap sector. All right, here is an example of a trap floor. So a trap floor is literally all traps. You have two minutes to get to the end of the dungeon, and it's kind of fun. And But the thing is with these, uh, these wind gusts, they remove buffs. So you got to know and got to pay attention. Like, it doesn't matter what you bring. Uh, the speed buffs will help you for tremendously, like initially getting through what you need to get through. But if you get hit by one of those wind things, you will get your buffs removed. So what I was doing, I was like pre-buffing and then just waiting for things to go through. And then I would just run in really fast, kind of try to play like walls to my advantage. So if I get pushed by the wind gust, then I get pushed into a wall, right? But like I said, it's actually kind of fun, but it's also super annoying. Like, I, like this, it, you just get constantly pushed. But you just go through and do what you need. Those frozen little Elsa's snowflakes on the ground, uh, they slow you. And even these rocks that fall on you, they slow you as well. So having a cleanser is also a really good option. But there you go. I'm at the end. 20 seconds left. I did it in a minute 40. The stage right here with the three-star treasure chests, don't ever go to these. These are horrible. It's not worth your time. As you can see, this is on the third floor, mind you. This is like farther away. Like it's harder. It's a harder floor. And it's giving me spell one books. It's giving me low uh, skill stones here. And it's giving me low gems. And it's just do not do these unless you like are having issues with your energy. Or you're just trying to skip a stage that you don't want to do. Like a trap floor. Because they can be annoying. The last icon on a stage is the merchant encounter. It looks like a little gold bag on Aladdin's carpet. This is where you can go in if you are low on energy as well. And you can go to the merchant. You can buy a, a crafting material here for 100 crystals. You can buy a water scroll for 200 crystals. You can buy runes here for 500 crystals. Now with the runes, they're 500 crystals, a legend rune, right? You got to be really picky in the substats. And as you can see, this rage rune sucks. The blade rune sucks. The swift rune sucks. It's just not worth it. Don't buy these unless that legendary rune is legitimately perfect. Every single substat needs to be perfect. These question mark stages, they can be any random encounter. You won't know until you go into it. But going through the whole first floor of every single stage, you can do this just with your summoner alone. I did not take any monsters for the whole first floor until the very last stage of that floor. So a couple tips to know while you're playing it is you can actually run and reset these monsters if you are in trouble. So if you're low health, you can run out and they will reset and go back to their spot. Unfortunately, if you kill one and run away, sometimes it does come back. Sometimes it doesn't. I think it depends on the group, but you can pull these individually as well. I pulled those two mobs separate when they were standing right next to that group of four. Now, all summoners have some kind of heal regeneration or actual heal. For Orbia, for example, you can use her second skill, which applies a drain life buff to you, as you see the little vampire looking uh, buff above her head. But then if you use that second skill and then switch to fire, which fire is obviously the strongest element here, it does way more damage you will still heal while you're the fire staff. But while you're progressing through these stages solo, just kill off a pack of mobs here and there. Watch the patrols to see where you can get less monsters at once and just kill them off one by one or three by three. 
You can even play line of sight like this so that they group up all in the same spot and you can AoE them down with your monster or your summoner, whatever you have and prefer. Where I am at currently, these are all the buffs I received during the climb to get there. The attack and HP and defense, crit damage, all that stuff is for my summoner. 5400 attacks, crazy. And then when I'm picking buffs, because it's all RNG, you kind of have to be super lucky to get perfect stuff, right? But you gotta remember what you picked, and you gotta know what you're gonna be facing. And what you are going to be facing is a lot of dark monsters, a lot of dark and light bosses, and then other creatures are random between water, fire, and wind. So there's a lot of things that I took here was because I knew what was coming. Like taking 20% less damage from dark is really good. These are just things to consider going forward when you're picking your buffs. I forgot I was in the middle of the screen, Jesus. Anyway, once you are in the need for finally use a monster, make sure to just try your weakest monsters first because you don't wanna use your strong monsters until later, later when you're stuck. Each monster has an energy bar and every time you use a monster on a stage, it will drop and lower. I'm pretty sure you can only use a monster about four, maybe five times. But like I said, just use a monster that is probably your weakest. You can use presets just to load on runes just for this stage. Then put them back to whatever you need to be after you beat it. But the first time I actually used one was on floor one, the last boss stage. And really, I probably didn't even need to. But honestly, like I needed a cleanser because the damage over times from Shirokli was killing me. I, and there was nothing I could do about it. Like I, I kill Shirokli and I get Borbo down really low, but then I die from damage over time. So it kind of sucked. So I just brought a very uh, level 69, no skills, giggity. And I, and I just cleansed the damage over time and beat it no problem. But like I said, even floor two, if you have a strong summoner, you can solo most of this content. It's when you get the floor three and the last stages of each floor is when it can be an issue. Now the boss stage for floor two, which is stage eight one, this can be soloed by an Orbia. I don't know if you can solo it as a Cleef or a Kina. So I would suggest maybe just bringing in like a healer to heal Cleef or some kind of bruiser damage dealer so Kina can heal and support that damage dealer. You might need more than that. So if you want to be safe, bring a tank, a damage dealer, and a healer between the summoner and your monsters, right? But with Orbia, you can solo this stage. But really all it is is you're kiting. You use the dark second skill to get the drain life buff on you. You switch to fire staff, which does the most damage out of all of the summoner weapons in this season. And you heal back up to full. And then all you really just wait for is the second skill to be available. You switch back to dark when it comes up. As you can see here, I'm going to switch the dark staff, apply the second, I get the drain life buff, and then I go back to fire staff, which will do the most damage, and you heal up the fool just by attacking and doing skills. With the roads, is though, you really got to be careful of the skills that they use. Because of their buffs, their attack up and their defense up of 10 stacks, if you don't have a stripper, if you get hit by one of these areas effects, you will pretty much get one shot. Floor 3 Stage 2 is when I started using monsters. A frontline tank and also a healer to support. This is a level 60 and 50 monsters. I just put some preset rune sets on them just to make them tanky. This truly helped getting past when the progression got harder. Alright, Floor 3 Stage 9-1. This is the first hard dungeon probably that I brought my strongest monsters. So what happens is there's a dark Borbo, there's a light Talatus, and there's also when one of them dies, a dark or a light Arachne comes out. I'm trying to get Talatis down and Borbo down at the same time so that one of them dies. I can kill the other one really quickly and because there's gonna be another boss coming, right? So as you can see, Talatis dies and now when the Arachne comes out, I'm just trying to get Taylor to provoke so I don't take any damage. Uh, and then once both of the initial two bosses are dead, then there's another Arachne that comes. 
So there's four bosses all together, and then you have to deal with the little spiders as well. So you gotta, you got, there's a lot you gotta do. You know, you, you need to bring AOE, you need to bring it sustain, you gotta get out of the abilities, uh, but you will do it if you follow all these things. But try to stack them up, try to do what you can. Four bosses, one stage. But that's it for today's video. Just wanted to show the basics of Galagos Ruins, some tips and tricks, what monsters to bring, some little things to do here and there. It definitely gets hard. Giggity. If you like my content, like my videos, sub, like, ding, ding, bell. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.